And here you find um, Mr. Green and Mr. Parker pondering what the town needed for the day, okay? And so they uh, uh, were, I took that out of another picture and I, I would love to have heard that, in, uh, that uh, conversation. Looking over the town and this is how it used to look and so it's different now. Okay, the station on the corner. Station on the corner belonged to the Ginnons, and then it belonged to the Milners, and Carol's family now has that, uh, the Snyder family, and uh, they've done a lot of remodeling. S there was a small house that was an apartment. I do know that John and Betty Faust lived there. Did anybody else? Okay. I think so, a lot of there are yeah. small buildings. Okay, all right. And uh, so uh, it's gone through a lot of different things. Um, if you went to uh, talk to Charlie, you better have the right, uh, right politics, and you better like to hear about uh, sports, okay? Uh, and that's okay, Carol. We really loved him, okay? Thank you. Stremelin Hill was a family uh, well drilling uh, business, and um, we'd seen the house previously, and she was a tax player, as we talked about before. Some churches have become family owned. Uh, are they here tonight? Okay. Okay, uh, they have remodeled that great, uh, great place to, uh, to watch for their family and, and they've kept a nice pr preservation to them. Next page. So, some churches remodel and the Methodist Church has gone through that several times. Uh, I did not know that they originally started at Fox Station until I did some history and I hope that's correct. Is it uh, those that are there? If not, I better check again, and I will. Okay, uh, this talks about how they remodeled, and John Faust was a part of the last of uh, that particular one. Some churches move. The Christian churches moved quite a bit, okay? Uh, and I just learned this week from some history, and, and verify this for me, that at one time, the Boundary Line Church and the Christian Church were together. Okay, and then they moved uh, away with about 100 members, came to uh, town and uh, was able to be in this spot, have a lovely location out on uh, the, the highway now. Cars, trucks, fuels, and repair. And I wish we could have still seen this one in person, but we weren't quite able to do that. But remember that trophy? I don't think I'd ever seen a trophy that large for uh, the car that he got. <laughs> Now, the house on the corner used to be a gas station for Bert Matthews, and then Bert uh, went down to the school to be a janitor, and Margaret Spray uh, had a hair uh, place there for a long time. And so uh, a lot of buildings just have multiple uses, and that was a part of that. Clark's shop, and if you missed the display today, uh, be sure and come up and look at that. Um, you needed a new roof, you needed uh, 10, uh, uh, things you would be able to do that. Um, so uh, Galen uh, said that he was going to put in a new window because somebody beat up his window. So don't do that anymore. Okay. The town's last operating sawmill was in good hands with Tom Crumley and Mr. Siders. Uh, George's grandfather worked for Mr. Siders. He was a great guy to work with. And thank you, Linda, for all the pictures that you were able to share with us. And the next picture shows, uh, whoop. We missed one, okay. I think we're okay, just go ahead. Okay, the blacksmith shops were important. Um, you recognize Weaver's uh, shop there, but when we moved to town, John Finkenbeiter was my neighbor, but he was also uh, there, and so that's a part of that. Um, Warren Heath came to town after General Motors came. Um, when Nichols has moved there, blacksmith shop out on the farm, and. Uh, we now have a house instead of a blacksmith shop next door to us. 